I am so excited. I, I've been using Nori Paste for, for a long time, many, many years, but but I, I just found out there's something even this morning. I love learning new things. But so traditionally Nori Paste, I mean, it's really, it's like what Phoebe said. Um, I probably, I, it does a lot of, it's got a lot of purposes. A little goes a long way. Um, it's, it's actually safe for children. I don't, I, there are some um, uh, preserves. If you were to make a starch-based paste yourself, which you can, um, you have to refrigerate it. It has a very short shelf life. I mean, that's one thing we didn't mention. Um, I've had this jar, I think for, oh, many, I don't know, a couple of years maybe, and it doesn't need to be refrigerated. And the reason it doesn't need that is it has a food safe preservative in it and a little bit of a mordant, which I'll explain why I'm excited about that. So, so there, it's just, it's a starch paste that you could make at home, but better yet, it has, it's, it's ready to go it, it doesn't need refrigeration and it'll last you a long time. But by the way I'm going to be using it, I don't think my jar is going to last very long. So I'm going to just kind of explain. These are some things. Um, I do book binding with Nori Paste. And the reason I do book binding is, uh, with it is that I like that it has the, it gives the, um, it gives the slow drying time. And it allows my uh, papers to be repositioned and moved around on the, on the book board. So it's just a very nice, uh, it's great for book binding. And what I usually do, though, I'll just kind of give you a little, a little bit of a, some information about that. I always mix it with a neutral pH adhesive, like PVA. That's could be this brand. It could be Elmer's White Glue. Um, I mix it about oh half and half. And what that does, mixing the Nori paste with the neutral pH, it gives me a higher tack, which the white glue does but it allows me to, to move it around. It gives me time to reposition. And it also is my papers are less likely to tear as I'm trying to reposition. Have you ever tried to put wallpaper on a wall? I mean, just think of that, you know, page, sticky paper everywhere. The Nori paste kind of takes time for the bond to happen. It actually bonds fully after it's drying. So that's why it, I just love having both of these. So I just want to give you that little information about that. Um, as I, um, so I'll just kind of go through the traditional uses. Uh, I use Nori paste to um, bond my Sumi paintings. So, and I'm going to show you how I do that. And I think what I might try to do is I think that I need to get my camera out a little bit farther out for you. So I'm just going to try to fix that in a second here. Um, and I think I'm going to zoom it out a little bit. There you are. So what this so what i'll do is i'm going to show you how i do this and and i'll sh tell you all about the supplies and if you have any questions of course phoebe will let me know i'll look in the chat or whatever um but this has been coated and you can see the difference one that's just on the rice paper itself this is our 6h paper it's kind of a student grade paper it's a little on the heavier side but even you can you can actually mount uh, paintings that are on the more delicate side and it will give that opacity you can even see uh, between the two this is a much brighter white than this one and that's because i've back i've actually uh, created a double thick paper using the nori paste and so i'll show you how i do that in a minute um, then nori paste is awesome for collage of course and i have got some little collage pieces that i've been working on and little different mixed media stuff you can use it um, it's amazing you can paint over it that's what nori paste it does have that mordant, so it will help fix your paints a little bit. And one thing I discovered today, and I'm so excited about, is that I was able to do jelly printing, monoprinting with it, using watercolor, not alcohol ink, not acrylics. It made my job of cleaning up my jelly plate so much easier. And I, I was inspired by a video, a woman out of the UK, she does woodblock printing using nori paste as the painting medium. And I kind of wanted to share that with you. She used it like you would a painting medium. So instead of a golden or instead of an acrylic medium, you would use the nori paste as your medium. And that allowed me to put it on my plate without, it had some, it had some uh, beading up, but I kind of liked that because it kept the little white areas. Um, but it was, it was an amazing process. So. Uh, that will come, I'm sure we'll do a tutorial on that, but I wanted to share with you that it's something I just discovered today, and oh boy, now I'm, I'm hooked. So that was just with plain old watercolors. I used, I had used some Chinese watercolors, and I used Japanese watercolors. 
along with the nori paste, I mixed it, I made a medium and brayered on the paint right on, or the watercolor right onto the jelly plate. And I made my little prints and it was fabulous, so much fun. So, and I also painted these black lines directly on the jelly plate and I was able to make them on a print. So super easy, fun, and easy to clean up. So there'll be more coming on that. I wanted to share that with you. The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show several projects. The first one is the traditional use that I've always found. I'm just gonna grab a piece of a piece of glass just so I have something to not mess my table up. I've got a plain piece of rice paper. Um, it has a smooth side and a rough side. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I've painted always, we traditionally paint our uh, paintings, we paint them on the smooth side. And so the rough side is, the two rough sides I'm going to put together. And what I'm gonna need, and if you were to do this, this is what you'll need. You'll need your nori paste, um, a little bit of a, like a dish, like I've got a dish here. And some nori paste. I've got a glue brush, which you can use a bristle brush if you have just a plain one of these. Um, your fingers would work too, but a brush you need though to put on the glue on or the paste onto the um, right onto the paper. You also need a spray bottle, and I fill mine with distilled water because I just think it's best, especially if you're doing something you want to be archival. I, do, I have a lot of hard water in my area, so it's distilled water, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So what I first do is I'm going to mix up. I think I'm going to bring this little down a little bit. I'm going to just bring my table far. There we go. <laughs> I want you to see it. Okay. So I've got the paste. I've got, and I've got, I'm just, and I have the big jar because um, I'm planning, I think nori paste is, it's, if you, as long as you don't put color on it, you could put this, your diluted paste right back in the jar. So I'm just going to take some of it. I'm going to dilute it. I think I'm just go ahead and put my fingers in it. It won't hurt me to do that. And if you worry about glue getting on your fingers, it won't dry. It, it, it dries like it, it's resoluble in water. So you don't need to worry about it. You can wash it right out. If you have get it on your clothes, you can wash it out. It's just super fun to work with. So I'm just going to take some water and I'm just going to put some, just going to dilute it a little bit, just to thin it a little bit, not tons, but I don't want it super runny. I kind of want it like melted ice cream. Right now it's a little heavier than that. So I'm just gonna, so you can see how long, how far this will go. And this is gonna go far. So before, well, I'm gonna mix that, but while I'm waiting, I'm going to take the painting and I'm gonna just turn it over and I'm gonna spritz the back of it. And I'm gonna spritz it lightly with my distilled water. So the reason I'm doing that is I'm stretching out the fibers a little bit. I'm going to just stretch the fight. It's going to, you know, it's going to expand. And that's normal. And I'm also going to spritz the back of my back paper too. Just spritz just enough to swell those fibers up a little bit. And then, then I'm going to mix my paste. And I could use a spoon. This one, I don't know about this one. I don't think I should use this. I think I just might use a brush. It's a lot easier. I can just use the glue brush that I'm using. So I want to, it's still a little thick, so I'm just going to add some more water. And like I said, I kind of want it into a melted, melted ice cream consistency. And plenty of water. I don't want globs. And it really dilutes very nicely. And I can have the nori paste has a lot of open time. Uh, it won't skin over like regular glues, but if you feel like you want to moisten it, just spritz it with a little water just to keep it happy so that if you want to leave the, the jar open. So now I've got it to the consistency I think I like. It's nice. Um, you don't need a lot of glue. I'm going to go ahead and add some more. So there it is. Now it's where I want it. So now you can see, if you could see, it's just kind of a, it's still not dripping. It's not dripping off my brush. It's still, it's on there. So now that I've let this sort of swell up. I'm going to paint the back of it. I'm going to gently brush it on with a soft bristle brush, you know, or a sheep hair brush would work great too. So you start and you just brush it on the back, going from the center outwards. And you're just going to just get that glue on the whole, just cover the whole back of it. And I want that glue to soak into the fibers of the paper. And if I were to do this with 
other glues, of course, you know, it would be a mess. It would, things would stick everywhere and oh boy, it would stick to the brush, it would start to tear. But I can be, I can take my time here. And I want that, those fibers to expand. So I want this paper to sort of flatten out. So the more, I and mean, it doesn't matter if I get a little glue on the front of it either. It's just going to disappear. So here I've got the, I've got the paste, the diluted mixture. I'd say that was 50% water, maybe, and 50% glue. And I'm, I could also, if I wanted to back the uh, paper, I could, but I'm not going to today. Um, I think I have plenty of glue that's going to soak right in to the uh, paper. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to spritz it, but I want to spritz the rough side, get it just a little damp, and now I'm just going to lay it right on top of my painting. And I'm going to take my, my lovely printing baron, and I've got some release paper. This is just some deli wrap. And I'm going to, because I don't want to harm the surface of my, or the paper, I'm just going to burnish it with my my baton that's properly pronounced <laughs> and now i'm just going to lift the release paper or just a wax paper and what i should do now is just set this aside somewhere to dry and then i could pop it off but i do want to show you what it looks like even though i should wait but i'm going to be impatient see how once that dries um, i'm going to just put that in between heavy papers. And then once everything dries, this will all be very white and opaque. Right now, there's water on it. So it, it did beautifully. It didn't spread the ink around, and it will dry invisible. It'll look beautiful. So I'm just going to leave it like that. And I'll show maybe after I'm finished with all the other things, I'll be able to show you what it looks like. But there it is. So I'm not just going to let that sit on there. I'll just set it aside because I think I'm going to use it for something else. <laughs> okay, so I've done that. Now, the next thing I want to show you, what I think is amazing, what I've discovered today, which, well, I've never used it before as a medium, but uh, I found it, it's amazing. You can see on the Sumi painting here, I'm going to bring it up a little closer so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to zoom it in. I want to show you something. Okay. See, this has Sumi ink mixed with Nori as a medium, and this is just Sumi ink plain on the paper. This is the 6H paper. When you turn it over, you can see the nori allowed, it was like, it, pre, it acted like a sizing or a medium. Um, I could size this paper with nori. That would be great. But just mixing it with the ink really gave it this nice, I was able to go slower in my brush strokes, and I'll show you how I did that. Um, I'm going to take a little piece of paper and just grab a little small piece. And I'm going to mix a little bit of the ink. I'm just going to bring that back so you can see it better. There you go. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of, got some Sumi ink here. This is our black ink. There's nothing in it except, well, I, I don't know what's in it. It's just carbon, but it might have a little, it might have a little something in there to give it a more permanence anyway, but it's still just Sumi ink. And so if I just work with it without any adding anything, I'm going to show you what happens. So a brush stroke, just a regular brush stroke. I'll go ahead and wet my brush a little bit. And I'm going to just do a normal brush stroke with, with this ink. And maybe I'll just do a little leaf here. I'll just go, I'll make a leaf and I'll go kind of slow. And you can see it has a little bit of bleeding or feathering is the word. I've got some feathering going out um, of that. I'll just do another one real quick to show you. So, and if I if I slow my brush down, if I pause, which I'm just going to slow it down and just let it just sit, you can see it will bleed into the paper. And as I go up, and I'm going to pause, you can see it kind of does. The, it just soaks in. These are desirable things when you're painting. But if you if you work fast, you can get fine lines. If you work slow, you can get it just soaks in. Okay, and that will prove on the back. It's very dark. So what I want to do is show you how fun this is, because if you want to alter, you just want to alter your um, experience a little bit. I'm going to put some of that mixture, that nori that's already here. I'm not putting a whole lot. I'm just putting, you can see I've got just a little bit on the corner. And I'm going to mix that in with my ink. And now I have a, a different type of ink. It's going to be more like, 
it'd be a different. It has some, it has the mordant in it. It has the, it has that starch that's going to make this a little ex different experience. So I'm going to do the same leaf shape. I'll just start it down here and I'll go slow. And I'm able to get a really fine line. I'm even pausing and I'm getting a beautiful fine line without any, uh, without any feathering at all. I mean, it's to me, I'm just hooked on this. This is going to be my new best friend because now I can draw on sumi paper, on rice paper, which I love. I love the surface. But and now I can be a little less spontaneous. I can be more mindful, if that makes sense, when I'm drawing. Now, so that's something that you can do as, you know, as you're, you can actually just add a little bit of nori paste to your inks and you can just get a totally amazing effect. This will also fix it more into the rice paper. Um, not that it really needs it because rice paper and ink usually don't separate, but so you can see the difference between these two. So I wanted to share that really new discovery um, that I had today with that. So that is a fun, fun thing. So the, that, the other thing I wanted to show you about, tell you about Nori, the original reason that I kind of fell in love with it actually, is I found that Nori paste, I'm just gonna clean this off a little, Nori paste was amazing for collage, of course, you know, um, paper craft, paper crafting, which is my pretty much my favorite thing beside painting. And I'm just gonna put this, get this ready. Um, so there, the first one thing, I think it was, it's on our website. I uh, painted some paper and I made these really cool luminaries. So I'll show you what, what I did. I used um, our 6MMU rice paper, which is, has some beautiful, beautiful silvery white feather fibers going through and it's really strong. And it, if you look see through it, it actually has a very beautiful, it, it's gorgeous with the light coming through. So it by itself, it's beautiful, but it's also beautiful when you paint it, when you color it. You can see this fiber, you know, the fibers even show more. This is just a simple, just some, uh, this one, the craft paint, I just diluted it and painted it right on. And what I had to do to get it ready for, um, to make, to do this, this is not a perfect, uh, this is actually has a little bit of a, 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 an angle. And so if it was a straight up and down cylinder, it would be easy. I would just cut a, a piece of paper straight, you know, no problem. But I had to cut it kind of an odd shape. And how I did that was I took my jar and I just, I'll just show you with this one, piece of paper. I took my jar and I just wrapped it around and then I cut where the paper, the seams uh, met. And then I just took my, paper and bent it right at the top. So I knew where to cut my, basically then I would take, I took scissors and then I knew where the line was. So that's how I was able to make this, the right shape. And here it is right here, ready for, ready for, to, to work with the Nori paste. So that was the little trick that there. Same thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just use this diluted stuff because I really don't need a heavy duty coat of it. Um, so you could, you'll know that Nori goes a long, a long way. So I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna just put on the back of my paper, I'm just gonna brush a nice heavy coat of paste. And I'm gonna let it sit because the paper again needs to expand and drink up that paste a little bit so that, it, cause it will get a little bit, uh, it, it, it'll, it'll swell up. I'm gonna do the same thing on this little disc, this little circle that I'm gonna use for the bottom. Just gonna kind of get it ready. I could have paid, I could have also sprayed it, but I think why not just use it get the glue straight on. So I've got plenty of paste there. I probably don't need to put it on my cup, but in fact, I don't think I'm gonna need it. So I'm just gonna start, now that it's had a moment to swell. Um, here's the beauty about using Nora paste is I'm gonna be able to just move, slide this around on my glass, which can you imagine, try, <laughs> I've tried it with glue and I have not had much luck. So I'm just moving it around and I'm just gonna, just position it until I get this nice, beautiful, it's beautiful right on there. The only thing I need to do is I'm going to take the bottom. You can see I've got this rough edge here. And when I'm, I'm, and it's still, I'm still able to reposition, like right now, I can still take it off and move it and change my mind, move it around. So that's what's beauty, the beauty of it. I'm gonna take some scissors, I'm gonna cut little notches right to the back of the glass. 
maybe not a whole lot, maybe they're about a half an inch apart, but that's gonna kind of like the egg. If you had ever covered eggs or thought about covering eggs, this is how you get your paper around a, uh, an uneven surface. We have a quick question, the coating for watercolor painting. Oh, so like basically if, if you wanna size your paper, if you have a paper that might be too um, absorbent or you want, um, yes, you can watercolor over it. You can also uh, mix watercolor with it if you want. Um, so, and it will, uh, it doesn't leave a shine. So I've got the little thing going. It doesn't leave a shine, so it won't alter the sheen of your paint. So yes, you can paint over it and under it, and you can mix it with the watercolor. And I could show you, if you're interested, I'll show you how I mix the watercolor and paint with it. So yes, you can. So I was able to get that on very nicely. And when it dries, it's going to dry totally invisible. The, there won't be any evidence that there was glue on there. It'll feel really nice. It won't have a sticky shine or anything. And you know, just like for like these little dots, I was I cut them out of the same paper that I did today. And I can just stick it right on the paper that's already, this one is dried earlier, but I can just put little dots on and um, create all kinds of little designs. And you could just see how it's just so easy to work with. Now that is my favorite way to use nori but now that i've discovered that it can be used as a painting medium i'm even more thrilled and excited about it so it's kind of you can layer with it you can paint over it it is reversible in water completely reversible so that you you know if you wanted to remove it like like phoebe said if you wanted to do a screen a rice paper um screen or a mirror or like if you wanted to have a privacy um you know, if you wanted to take your windows and make them uh, have a soft, uh, what's the word, like a soji screen looking thing, but it'd be on glass. You can paint, and I did this in the past, um, you can use the nori paste, paint it on your glass, put the rice paper on, and then down the road, if you want to remove it, you just re-wet the paper and you will have no problems removing it because it is 100% water reversible. And that that's really important, especially when it comes to our, our, you know, something that's archival, because you can reverse it. So that's a good thing. You want to be able to reverse, you want to be able to change your mind. And there we go. Now we've got some dots on this. And I wanted to show you, you can also paint over it, and it will dry invisible, there won't be any residue at all. So there's my little dots. That will be my luminaria with some dots. It doesn't look even, but who cares? <laughs> I'll play with it later. But that's just something you can just keep layering with. And here I wanted to show you this little last one, the one that I had coated. The way I fixed the bottom is I just put a nice little circle on the bottom. And I have a little secret on how to do cut circles out of rice paper, and I want to share with you. Um, normally, when you use a hole punch, if I can find my hole punch, there it is. If you use a hole punch with fibrous papers, have you ever seen, I'm going to just show you a little demo here. Um, you just put it through a single layer, and usually it grabs you see what happened it wasn't it doesn't the fibers cause they just kind of they just don't cut all the way through and i've noticed that a lot so but what i found is if you just take the same paper and you fold it into several layers get that get that paste out of there real quick um i'm just going to do several layers right here and now i'm going to punch the same use the same hole punch and there we go. Now, now that now that didn't do it this time. <laughs> That's funny. You know, it, but it did pretty well. It went through most of the layers really nicely, and I was able to get several dots. Well, that's because I had it folded funny, but there you go. So I have nice clean dots. And I mean, that's just something is a little trick. If you have fibrous papers that don't like to uh, go through your your little punch, then just put some more paper in between, get some more layers, and it should work just great. Now, here's a little thing I had prepared beforehand and i don't want to miss anything um this is a little collage that i kind of got started this was some this rice paper the same rice paper i painted with watercolor and then drew with a permanent pen and did some doodling and then cut it out with scissors and the i've got my little collage ready to assemble so this is a hard it's a masonite panel ampersand makes these um these are very handy because they're already hard. And I like having uh, doing collage on a hard substrate. It's okay to do it on something 
um, not as hard, but you're going to have to probably flatten it somehow between hard, between things. So I'm going to use the nori straight out of the jar right now. And I'm going to use some paper, if I can grab it. This is my paper that I'll just kind of use to kind of bury your paper that I might use. And I might use the Baron too. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to put a coating of the nori straight on the surf, my surface here. Just painting it right on. Maybe a little mixture of the one with a little bit of the water in it too. But straight out of the jar is fine. I'm just going straight, straight in this jar. And I've got a little glue brush. I like using a glue brush because I don't like it on my fingers, but some of it's on my fingers and it's going to wash off easily. So no, I won't worry there. So this, this is a paper that I, it's actually origami paper that I um, jelly printed actually. I like, I, you know, kind of addicted to that. So, <laughs> so I'm just going to put a little bit of the glue also on, and I cut the paper ahead of time to this, just a little bit under the size of the of the um, board. So this is a five inch board. I cut the paper four, five, uh, four and five eight, uh, four and seven eighths. So I've got a little border and I kind of want that. And I'm just gonna lay it on and just push it in. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint right over it in fact, because I am gonna be layering. So I've got that, it's already on there. And if I wanna move it around and reposition it, this is the time to do it. I'm just gonna use my fingers and kind of push it on there. And then the second one, the second piece is some paper. Same thing, some origami paper that's been printed. And this is actually our use-in paper. So the use-in paper has some fibers in it, which is nice. It's very fibrous and very strong. And I really like it. And it doesn't tear easily unless you want it to. It's more like fabric, actually. It's got beautiful fibers in it. But my jelly printing kind of covered that up. So now I'm just painting right over it. And what I like about Nori Paste too, if you have fibers on your paper, the fibers are going to um, be really gorgeous. They really look great. So the next thing in my layering thing is I've got this paper. I'm just going to go straight on. I'm going to just position it onto my panel here. The same, I just glued it pretty much the same. Um, I just basically cut it to the same and I can always position it just to get it to lay right the way I want it. There we go. And I'm just layering and brushing right over. And if I want, I can wrinkle. This stuff is actually has some wrinkly. I can push it around and I can make kind of fun little wrinkles if I want. Um, but I'm going to kind of leave it sort of straight. And I'm just going to push it. I see that I need to move it around, but I'm just kind of merging all those fibers together. But what will happen is these will dry back to its original state. So the same thing, I'm going to do, lay my little picture that I drew, right? Maybe kind of offset it a little bit. I don't want it to be smack in the middle. And I'm going to go straight over it with the nori. And moving from the center out, and it kind of looks more transparent right now, but it will, it will uh, become more opaque once it dries. And now the thing that I like to do, kind of it, pretty much I've got it laid out the way I like it. I was going to add some little pure paper um, elements, and I may decide, yes, I'm going to just go ahead and stick those on. This is our some origami paper. It's color all the way through, so there, it just looks really, really pretty. And I might just add some drawing elements afterwards. Maybe. Just depends. I'm just going to put that right over and maybe brush a little glue a little of the paste mixture over it just to get it down there and I can move it around as I wish, which is really fun. Now just what's nice too about the Nori is I can draw over it, paint over it. So, you know, there's more I can do over this. So I'm just going to take my, if once I've got my elements down and I've got a lot of paste on this, a lot, <laughs> just going to, hopefully I won't pull off some of the, some of it, but I'm just going to burnish it down. Another question real quick yeah. i was wondering if you can use a sponge brush to apply the nori a sponge paste. brush would be great yes absolutely um a sponge brush though let's see i'm going to pull this up gently a sponge brush will probably not uh let you push the paste in as deeply you know through the fibers of the paper but it still will work but just make sure it's on the drier side instead of on the wetter side so that has to dry and then when it's completely dry 
um, that's the, that's the collage, and it'd be fun. I'll take a picture of it and show everybody uh, when it's completely dry. It'll look like a just like a little painting, and I won't need to do anything. I won't need to fix it or put anything over it. Um, see what else? I think I might have showed you everything. Let's see. I think. Does anybody have any questions? Because I think I showed you everything. Oh, I could show you how I back coated this. I don't think I did show you how to. Yes, I did show you how to did the sumi painting. And let me pull that up for you so you can see. It's still very wet, and I'll nori dry nori paste is a very slow drying product, so you'll be surprised at how long you can leave it, the jars open. But this one is the one that completely is completely not completely dry because I did it this morning, so it's not. It's but you can see the opacity, the bright white of this one as compared to this one. But once this is dry, it's going to look just like the other one. And a little trick that I do, oh, I forgot something I want to show you. Um, what I like to do is I like to be perfectly flat. I usually, once this is dry, I'll spritz it again on the back and I'll put it between two heavy uh, books to really flatten it. And that's how I get all my pictures nice and flat. I forgot that I had to add, wanted to do these on the sides of that. And I'll show you how fun. So to complete my little collage and look how quickly that was didn't take that long to, um, to prepare it. So I'm just going to put some glue, some paste right onto this, to the back of my, the strip of paper that I cut just to fit right on the sides here. Cause I want it to be a complete, oops, and I needed to put some paste on it so that I can move it around. Now I can just kind of move it, slide it on, position it, and get it just the way I want it before I really press down. And I'm going to smooth it a little bit. And there I've got this really beautiful edge. And I'm going to do that all the way around. I'm just going to take, and that kind of finishes the whole piece. Now I've got a complete collage that I really like. And the, the paint was only, a, basically, it was just a base coat, kind of like a primer. And even though it's not necessary to prime, but it kind of helped to do that i think it makes for a nicer finished product finished piece and see how nice and flat that dries and all, and some people in the past would say oh it wrinkled my project yes it will wrinkle um it because it has so much moisture in it nori paste if you use with light paper to light paper or light paper to a medium weight paper any combination thereof you're going to have some buckling and that's normal you can achieve a beautiful flat uh, finish by pressing, but make sure when you press it, press it while it's still wet because it just won't, doesn't do, it won't work unless you pay, press it while it's wet. And then give yourself plenty of time to dry. And that's the thing, the patience. And I live in a dry climate, but it still takes a while for my nori paste projects to dry because it just has so much moisture and it's made out of yummy ingredients. <laughs> And I've got glue all over my fingers, but what's happening is my paper is not sticking to my fingers. And that's the beauty of it. It's not sticking, you know, I'm not having that problem where you have glue sticking all over your fingers and it's everywhere. And here I'm having a wonderful experience and I'm just able to move this. You can see I'm able to position that paper. And if I wanted to, I could finish this after it's dry, and it's going to take probably hours to dry because I really coated it with a lot. But once it's completely dry, if I wanted to coat it with a, let's say, a, a gel medium or a varnish, I could do that. And I can use that. Can That's not a problem. You can layer over with your nori paste with no problem at all. So there it is. And I think what I could do, a little... A little oops now i've got a mess now i've got stuff that's messy but the nice thing is my cleanup is going to be so easy because i don't have you know it's not going to just destroy everything uh which glues can be they can be a challenge and nori paste is for me is like the one of the most unchallenging it's so fun to work with like this one i might just take my dots just to finish up i'm just going to cut a straight line cut the dots in half i'll move that out of the way I'll cut my dots in half and I'm just going to use my remaining paste with my fingers and just place them on the on my candle holder because I plan to use these later. I think this will be so pretty. 
I'm just going to put it on there and now I'm going to move it. See how I got it up there a little too high? Well, that's okay. I'm just going to lift it off and move it. I could never do that with normal, with any delicate paper or just paper in general. I can't do that. So how long would you say the drying time is about? It's going to take, depending on how much, how thick you apply it. Um, I'll, like that one I had showed you, the it was oh this morning that I did it, and it's still not dry completely. So I'd say uh, several hours, depending on your what type of um, environment you're in. I'm in the desert. Um, I'm in a much much drier climate than many, and it's taking quite a bit of time. So I'd say overnight, if you want to press your projects um, ahead of time, you know, press them and just leave them overnight and just let them dry completely and that will be the safest way but even if it doesn't dry and it's still kind of damp put it back let it press a little longer because if you don't if you're if you're using thin papers and you just and you're worried about them buckling they need to be completely dry after the pressing so if they're still damp just put them back put them back and let them press a little longer because just even slight dampness will make them um, kind of curl up again and that, that's normal because it's moisture and it's, and I think the rate of the, of the paper, and there's probably a reason, a physical, scientific reason why, but it's, I just know in my experience that it just, it just takes time and I can't really tell you, depending on where you live. The good news, because it does not have a, because it has a preservative, which if you were to make your own, it would be kind of hard to do this, but um, sometimes I've heard people that have made their own pastes and then they they uh, have a little molding problem because they put it, you know, they put it between plastic papers and and they uh, leave it in for days or so and then they get a little mold and that's going to happen because it's if it doesn't have a preservative and this stuff has a little bit of a preservative which does gives you that time to uh, you can it doesn't it won't mold no matter what so. There, there's my little luminaria, and I'm really ready to light that. And the reason I do these glass covered ones rather than paper is that the glass will protect the flame from the paper, obviously, and I'm ready to go. And then these, so with this one, the jelly printed one that I did, um, you can see because it has the nori paste, it didn't soak much through the rice paper. And I think it'd be fun to try this on much more thinner papers, like some of the delicate papers that we have that are um, much thinner in body, but are really pretty cool to work on. I think it's going to be fun doing using the nori paste as a medium to to make a thicker inks. So you can see in this ink, it's a lot thicker. And I'm just going to see how what happened here. So it also is probably a slower drying ink. I'm just going to yeah, I believe this is a much slower drying ink now, and it's really a beautiful to work with. So I'm excited about that. And I can also take some of my pre-painted pre -painted papers, like this one. I think it's going to look really neat. If I wanted to do some little brush painting over it, I can get some really fine lines and little marks if I want. Yep, very fun. So working with just using it as a painting medium, if you're not into doing collage, if you just want to have a little control over the amount of absorbency that your inks will have on the particular paper you're using, and that includes watercolor paper. I've got some watercolor papers that are funny. They, some will just suck up the, they just drink that paint up, and some it floats completely on. So. If, um, I do have a paper that I, I thought was really nice. It cost kind of, a, kind of a lot of money. I don't want to throw it away. I wasn't happy that it was so absorbent. So I'm going to brush some nori paste on it and let it dry. A thin coating, though. And I'm going to let it dry, and I'm going to try my paper, and I will let you know the results. But I think it's going to be a, a, a game changer. Just, you know, if you want, or even some of the inexpensive papers that you might have that you don't want to spend a lot, but you want that floating you know you want your paint to float on top that's that's what you'll have you can use nori paste for so and you can see how i can go very slow and really make some nice little lines without that feathering which is really nice so 
maybe I will start to work now more with a brush rather than a pen because I've got this gorgeous control that I would normally have if I was to use a marker or if I could never get this with rice paper ever in my life. <laughs> so I'm just really super thrilled about that. And if you're gonna do it after, I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna most likely not. And the reason being is because um, watercolor paper, of course, you know, gum Arabic is a water soluble product. So gum Arabic is also reversible, um, I believe. I may be wrong, but it's, it's also a, it's a medium that uh, is used for watercolors. So if you're going to be using it after you've painted, you'll probably get some smearing. I'm just going to pretty much guarantee you'll get some smearing. Some smearing. On acrylics, no problem. Over acrylics, you can do it. But I'm just going to size my watercolor paper. And of course, I'm not going to be able to tell you what's going to happen. Um, I'll just size part of it and then, or just put a little, I've got a little paste over it. And it might be too much paste. I think I might have put too much, but I mean, I can always dab it off with a little paper towel. And I want to, I'm going to let that sit and, and I'm going to paint and I'll see what the difference is. Um, what I think that you would really enjoy, though, with with uh, Nori, if you're using it as a watercolor medium, I'm just going to do a little bit of going to show you a little demo here. I'm just going to grab some blue paint, some watercolor. Whoops, that's a lot. <laughs> Didn't mean to have that much. Um, and then maybe a little red. And these are some Chinese watercolors, but you can use any tube that watercolor that you have. If I just grab a little bit here. Any tubed watercolor will work. This happens just to be at my fingertips. There we go. That's some more of an orange. I don't know if I want to use orange, but anyway, I'm just going to mix it a little bit with, and of course, I just got to grab a new brush, and I'm just going to mix it up just a slight amount with the nori, and I want to use it as a medium, and of course, I didn't bring, I didn't have my water dish, so that's all right. I'm just going to fill it with, I have to improvise. <laughs> so there's some clear water and I'm going to take a little bit of the medium. I could put it, mix it, which is kind of dirty there, but that's all right. All right. I'm going to mix a little bit of watercolor with it. And I want to just see the difference on how it flows. I'm going to use the back of this paper that I just pulled out, back of the sheet, and I'm going to just see how it behaves. Um, so what I'm noticing, so the difference between, I see that it's more, it kind of changes the way, the viscosity of the paint, of course, it's not going to hurt it at all, um, but it will change it. And I think it will act more as a, it, it's an interesting because I'm able to, hmm, this is Chinese watercolors though. It's not a traditional Western or European, but, um, I think it will, you will, it will kind of work. It will probably help with washes if you're doing a graduated wash. I'm really going to kind of, I think it will be beautiful mixing it when you're doing a graduated wash because I can see that it really gives a smooth lay down of color. And if that kind of makes any, if that kind of resonates with you, um, it's a really, it is a very, it, mixing it with watercolor is what I would recommend. I don't think I would recommend painting water, uh, painting with nori paste to seal it or anything, because it really doesn't act as a sealer. It would, but it will act as a medium and it will maybe kind of help the flow. It looks like, I mean, I'm seeing a big difference. It doesn't granulate as much. And if I had a dry piece, let's see, if this nori paste was dry, which it isn't, <laughs> this piece right here, I put nori on it, but I doubt it's dry, but I'll try. Let's see. I mean, if I hit, I could hit it with a hairdryer and see. So this is the nori paste side. So I'm able to paint, and this I'm able to paint over it no problem, and it acts as a beautiful side thing. So it is safe to paint over it, but I wouldn't paint nori paste over your watercolors. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> George says she can't wait to try this. And I think we're getting a lot of that excitement in the comments. People are really inspired to just see what they can create. Well, just have fun with it. And that's the, I mean, really, and you really can't do anything wrong. I mean, there's really nothing wrong you can do. You can just keep playing and pushing those boundaries, you know, see what you can do. Just who knows, you know, like that's how what happened with the jelly 
plate today, I just said, I'm going to try it. And I was so happy with the results. I mean, I was able to get these really cool patterns and prints without having to clean, you know, using the hand sanitizer and the whole nine yards. It was nice. So I'm going to keep exploring that and we'll have lots of fun with it. And I'll just kind of show you the progress of drying. Now, this won't dry till tomorrow, um, but it's starting to get less transparent now, this little collage. So as it starts to dry, um, I would never suggest hitting it with a hairdryer. Like I tried this morning to try to speed things up. And all it did was buckle my paper even more when I had it on, um, on regular paper, it just bowed it even more. So just patience is a good thing when you're working with nori paste, just let it dry, let it dry uh, naturally, let the water evaporate naturally. And then once it's completely dry, it is very stable. It's like a very stable surface you'll feel like this is getting pretty dry um you know it's so stable but if i were to wet it it will reverse i can peel this off if i wanted to soak this candle holder and do another one i could but if i want to make a permanent here's another another thing you can go over this with uh, acrylic medium a varnish and if you wanted to finalize something if you don't want it to be reversible in water just varnish it with an acrylic based medium and you'll be will be good to go. So there it is. I'm excited about this one. I may go ahead and coat it, but if I do, I may uh, go into the danger of transparent, making this rice paper transparent again. So I think I'm just gonna leave it alone. <laughs> and then I may draw some little lines and I could do that actually while I'm here and I have my paste uh, mixture of paint, I'm just gonna do it. So I'm just gonna take a little, my intention, I'm hoping I can do it here without ruining it because that's a permanent mark, but I wanted to do like little lines. Yes, exactly. Just little lines that indicate or give the feeling of a flower growing or plant growing. So I'm able to do that with the Nori um, paste that has the Sumi ink with Nori and that will make it more permanent on the substrate as well. So there it is. So there it's all done. I love that. And I could also draw little lines. Um, I could do that with light colors or dark colors, draw little lines into the flowers. I think I might try to do that with a light color, maybe some metallic or something, but I'll, so I'll stop now while I'm ahead. <laughs> but so there you go. And I'm hoping that if this inspired um, you to try using Nori paste and just having it in your, in your stash of uh, art supplies. It's uh, another thing that I, you probably don't, you can't tell here, but it smells delicious. Um, it has a beautiful scent. It's not perfumey by any means, but it has a nice clean, it doesn't, it's not like a detergent. It just has a nice scent and it's just really pleasant to work with and easy to store. Um, you can have a jar like this and it's not gonna go bad for many, for many, many years. But I'm hoping with what I'm gonna be doing with this for, from now on, I think it's gonna probably go down pretty fast. <laughs> So there's so many things you can do with it, and I'm hoping that today's demo inspired you a little bit.